As you can imagine, when exposing a 500-year running conspiracy involving the NASA, the UN, and world Freemasonry, there's going to be death threats, which I receive regularly, and controlled opposition agents will be sent in to infiltrate and co-opt the growing movement. I'm doing this podcast to expose the evidence I've compiled that several such government shills are currently hard at work doing just that. Like Paul Bale sitting jealous in his bathrobe Or Stephen Christ looking sly in his dim light Or the red on her bed flashing gang signs Or Mark Sarge from a game design standpoint Like Rain Griffin's interpretive dances Pat Steers fake smiles and furtive glances Power lands weird songs and rambling rants Are like John Lamont always changing his stance The shill M.O. it's always the same Take the flat earth B word and make it so lame That it stays taboo and avoid like the plague so it seems like you're trolling and just playing a game mix some misinformation and you're ready to play put flat earth in the title and your shills get paid it's as easy as that just google hangouts all day keep a kosher and bash on eric dubay mark Sargent. all right well with that auspicious start uh now eric dubay is going to take apart flat earth and all of the major figures in flat earth starting with our friend mark Sargent and his flat earth clues now as you may know i did an entire series on mark Sargent, uh breaking down his clues one by one in 14 episodes so if you have a chance, go have a look at those so you'll see exactly what it is Eric's talking about, the silliness and the Truman Show conspiracy tinfoil hat stuff that Mark comes up with. But now, let's get Eric Dubay's opinion of Mark Sargent and see what he has to say about these flat earth clues and the motivations of Mark. So, roll the music and we'll get started. weeks after my Flat Earth book videos and articles started going viral, this character showed up on YouTube making a series of well-presented Flat Earth Clues videos, uploading a new one every day. Next, he started getting several radio interviews per week, got his very own radio show, and even went on Coast to Coast AM, all in the name of exposing his Flat Earth Clues. These clues, however, Instead of revealing actual scientific evidence and experiments which prove the Earth to be flat, like myself and all genuine flat earthers do, Mark's clues are always merely his personal speculations. For example, Mark's first flat Earth clue is that Hollywood hasn't really made many movies about the moon landings, and this gives him a raging clue that Apollo was fake and the Earth is flat. His second clue was claiming with no evidence whatsoever that Freemason Admiral Byrd had reached the dome. The unfounded claims only got more ridiculous as Mark began doing radio interviews. Suddenly, he began saying that the moon and stars are not there. They are holographic projections, and recommending at least once per show that everyone must visit his fellow shill, Crow 777's YouTube channel. I called Mark out on this, giving abundant evidence that the moon and stars are natural luminaries. Oh, they're luminaries. That's so much different than making them two- and three-dimensional objects in a video game on a Truman Show set. And your evidence for that is what, Eric? And not holographic projections, to which he responded only once, and did so not personally, but through another fellow shill, Asensi. Asensi relayed Mark's message, which said, Of course I don't have evidence that everything in the sky is a projection of some kind. The look and opinion I'm taking is strictly from a video game design standpoint. And herein lies Mark's method of muddying the waters of truth and poisoning the flat earth well. Everything he has to say on the flat earth subject is based on his model, not science, evidence, experiments, proof, or reason, or but rather what guesses. he thinks works best from a game design standpoint, because he used to be a video game designer. So he claims without evidence 
the celestial bodies are projections. He claims without evidence that Admiral Byrd reached the dome. He also claims without evidence that heat is not caused by the sun in his model, but by unknown processes underneath the flat earth. He has claimed more than once that gravity is something we can prove obviously exists, when all genuine flat earthers know gravity does not exist, has never been proven, and is just density. He even recently introduced his own untested theory of molecular magnetism to explain gravity in his enclosed flat model. In interviews, Mark regularly lies about me, saying things like, Eric thinks the moon is two-dimensional, while he thinks it's three-dimensional, when the truth is that I have always said the moon is a natural luminary, while he says it's a holographic projection. And the difference between the two would be exactly what? considering the moon is a large piece of rock in orbit approximately 238,000 miles from the Earth, orbiting the Earth once every 27.3 days. He claims, Eric considers himself a flat Earth purist, another lie I've never said, nor do I even understand what a flat Earth purist is supposed to be. In one interview, Mark had the audacity to lie and claim that I purport that the flat earth disk is constantly rising to account for gravity, when I have exposed in my articles and interviews repeatedly that this is a false flat earth argument put forward by the controlled opposition Flat Earth Society. I thought that one of your big points was that you didn't give a lot of interviews and articles and videos like these flat earth shills that you're going after now. Wasn't that the point that you made? And that gravity doesn't even exist. In early interviews, Mark claimed to have read some of my book, but when cornered in later interviews, claimed to have not read my book. He constantly promotes the Orlando Ferguson concave earth map as being one of the best flat earth maps, when it is clearly one of the worst. Oh, of course, that's because your Gleason map is the right one, right? He mentioned in one interview the suspicious fact that he worked in internet data mining for three years, and he constantly plays with a tiny globe afront the camera in every interview, subconsciously reinforcing the globe model while talking nonsense about the flat earth. Patricia Aiken even asked him during her interview to please stop doing this, and he agreed and promised to stop, but then in his very next interview, and many since then, has broken his promise and continued to play with this little ball earth. In his interview with Dan Lefkowitz, after 50 minutes of speculative evidence from every ancient myth he's found, Dan asked, is there any other proof the earth isn't spinning other than these ancient texts? At which point Mark made the shilliest statement of his career, claiming after a five second pause and long exhale, if there was, I think we'd probably know it at this point. Do you know the Earth is rotating, Eric? Truly, we do. We've measured it. We've observed it. We've seen its effect on things. I, I find it absolutely incredible that you're going after Mark Sargent for having a silly idea when that is what you have based your entire Internet persona on, was silly ideas and nervously, annoyingly laughs as he does every time an interviewer <laughs> asks him a straightforward question. Claiming mm -hmm. to know of no evidence or proof that the Earth isn't spinning other than the ancient texts is because ludicrous, it's not. disingenuous, and proves Mark has no business in the Flat Earth movement. In the same interview, he also lied that he's been trying to patch things up with Eric when we haven't talked whatsoever. In his Ball Earth Skeptic interview, Mark came right out and said, I'm not even that attached to the flat model. Everyone has their models with good and bad points. I have my model, Eric has his model, and even Lord Stephen Christ has his model, which is a lot better than the ball earth model. At this point, I'm just sure it's not a ball, other than... Fascinating. And where is this flat earth model that's actually accurate? Because... None of us have ever been able to find one. As a matter of fact, I think the current offer for an actual working flat earth model is up 
to what, $44,000? Other than that is open to speculation. What kind of confidence does it instill in listeners when this supposed leader of the flat earth movement isn't even sure the earth is flat? You know, people ask me, uh, Mark, could there be aliens in the, the domed flat earth? And I say, listen, I used to design video games, all right? And in a video game, you can do whatever you want, okay? Oh, Lord. Now we go into Eric Dubay mimicking Mark Sargent in an interview. Okay, this ought to be good. So that's my answer, basically, is, sure, you want there to be aliens? I'll give you aliens. You want, what else you want? Holographic moons? Stars? Yeah, it's just a piece of cake. Whatever you want, you know? People ask me, Mark, what about gravity? And I say, sure, you know, in a video game, all you gotta do is increase or decrease the gravity however much you want it, you know? So, what? Well, whatever. People ask me, Mark, you're obviously so genuine. Your 13 clues are way better than Eric's 200 proofs. So, what do you think of Eric? I mean, coming out with 200 proofs, isn't that pretty shilly? I say, hey, this flat earth is big enough for all of us, right? That's my philosophy. I just want us all to get along. Eric is the one causing all the division in the movement. Can't okay? we all just get it's along? It's because of his ego, right? He's got this ego. And because of the ego, he thinks Patricia, Mark, Paul, Ashley, all of us, all of us Jew shields, he thinks we're Jew shields. I'm starting to sound like a Jew right now. That nasally, I can't hide it. It's just oozing out on me. You know, I got to tell you something. I don't think in all the times that I've reviewed Mark Sargent's videos, and I'm certainly not a fan of his, and I've been quite critical of him. I've never heard him play this Jew card. And looking at some of the illustrations that this Eric Dubay uses, this guy really appears to be quite the anti-Semite. And... Uh, I don't know, this This is not, uh, shall we say, an admirable quality that he has. And it amazes me that um, people follow somebody that expresses these types of opinions and, and characterizes people that way. People ask me, Mark, why are they just going to play with a, a ball or like a frisbee when you give an interviews? And I say, I do what I'm told. Uh, actually, recently I've been... Uh, talking to Crow Triple Seven uh, about this particular frisbee. In fact, uh, as you can see in here, this is a genuine photograph of a NASA astronaut taken on the moon, and there's grass on the moon. You can see the green grass on the moon. Okay. Now, Crow Triple Seven and myself are convinced that not only is the moon not there? It's a projection, a holographic, 2D, maybe 3D, maybe 4D. We haven't we haven't thought of that before. Shit, I gotta call Crow. All right, I just checked with Crow Triple Seven, and we're pretty sure now that the moon is a 4D hologram with grass. Okay, it is not a desert planet. You know, the moon is not uh, Arrakis. Uh, or Tatooine, you know, the desert planets, Dune, you know, from science fiction. Tatooine oh, is a uh, guy. Star Wars. Anyway, uh, it is terrestrial with grass and frisbees. And Saturn is much closer than we have been told. In fact, from a video game design standpoint, I'm pretty sure Saturn is a holographic projection. And the ring around Saturn? Uranus. 
Uranus is another Uranus. planet. People ask me, Mark, why do you always just go on and on about endless speculations and what you would do from a video game design standpoint? And I say, well, from a video game design standpoint, you can do whatever you want. So that's what I do. People always ask me, Mark, you're such a cool, down-to-earth, uh, trustworthy, honest guy. What, what does Eric and the entirety of Eifers have a problem with you? What is the big deal? And I say, look, when you sing Kumbaya as sweetly as I do, some people just don't want to join you around the campfire. But some people will. And that's why I'm here with Patricia. Well, the, the second annual Flatties were a wonderful success. Uh, and the first annual Flat Earth Conference was just out of this world. I mean, the media coverage that has been taking place at and since this event is paramount, is incredible. And do you know huge? how I approach these interview opportunities? This is what I do, right? Ready? He, I come on the show, and they're like, oh, Mark, you, uh, you have a very strange belief here. You're a flat earther. Uh, yeah, t tell me a little bit about the flat earth. And this is what I do. I say, hi, yeah, that's right. We live on a frisbee. We live in a planetarium. We live in a Truman Show enclosed system. We live in a uh, Game of Thrones wall dome. Okay, we live on a spinning roulette wheel. We're in a Hollywood backlot with projection screens cut in the sky projecting holograms and stars. Gravity exists, but it's molecular magnetism, and the flat Earth is heated by unknown processes from underneath, not by the sun. 50 yeah, kilometers. They've, been, they've been delving into uh, Metatron and how they created uh, my website and our phone apps and how the apps spy on everybody and uh, track you and how I admitted before that I was into data mining for three years. And they're putting all these connections together about how basically I'm a co-opting honeypot for the Flat Earth movement. You can read all about it on IFERS, uh, but it's really a waste of your time. I'd recommend, you, you know, don't subscribe to MGTV or Flat Earth Reset, right, or, or any of these other channels which are doing a wonderful job uh, exposing the connections that myself and Patricia and other people uh, allegedly have to uh, entities such as uh, NASA, Disney, um, and other Masons. The Flat Earth Society has been posting about me claiming that I'm a member. I have said before that I'm a card-carrying member of the Flat Earth Society. People in interviews have introduced me as Mark from the Flat Earth Society, and I never correct them. Um, basically, I'm just like the Flat Earth Society. I am the Flat Earth Society 2.0. I've basically co-opted the Flat Earth movement, and everyone loves me for it. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. It's, it's really awesome. It's really awesome. I love it. It's fun for me. And I never say anything bad about anyone. I'll never say anything bad about Eric. You know, that's just who I am. It's not in my script. It's not my backstory. It's, the, it's me. I just, I love everyone, even Eric. You might have seen my uh, I am Mark Sargent shirts, you know. It's not that I'm a narcissist or want to detract from the Flat Earth message. It's just that I don't want to prop myself and my name up as being the Flat Earth name, you know. It's not that I want to be a leader as much as I want to be the Flat Earth leader, okay. It's not so much that I'm the king of Flat Earth. I'm the father. Because I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be uh, uh, elitist about it, you know. You're all dead. Let's, we're a family here. Yeah. I'll be your father. I'm not going to be your king. All right. Father of the flat earth, king of none, father of all. Mark Sargent. I am Mark Sargent. I'm selling those. I am Mark Sargent shirts, by the way. If anybody wants them, nobody has bought them. Nobody seems to think it's funny. I don't know why. I think it's funny. It's like, you know, the Spartacus, we did it on Patricia's show. 
It was funny. Well, I'm Mark Sergeant. No, I'm Mark. You know, like that movie. It was pretty cool. It was awesome. It was actually the best moment ever on Patricia's show. Well, guys, thank you very much for stopping by and joining me in this fascinating look into the uh, infighting of the Flat Earth community between Eric Dubay and Mark Sargent. Now, our next one I'm not very familiar with, somebody by, by the name of uh, Asensi, uh, who was apparently before my time, and I don't see anything on him when I do a YouTube search for it. But according to Eric, he seems to operate under SOC accounts, so I probably won't be able to find him in that name. Maybe you guys can give some insight into the comments. But that'll be our next episode, and then we're going to go from there. Thank you very much for joining me. This is Bob the Science Guy. See you. This rabbit hole's too deep for me Feel my brain getting real sore